The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interests of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. Children's books are a wonderful way to introduce children to different cultures, different countries, different ways of thinking. Our guest today, Lois Rehnquist, is a children's services librarian with the Minneapolis Public Library. She has a wonderful variety of books on multicultural themes, especially appealing to younger readers. These books are all available at your local public libraries. A word we hear a great deal today is multicultural. Most commonly, it's interpreted as meaning African American, Pacific Rim Asian Americans, Hispanics, and American Indians, and indicates a concern for learning about and appreciating the cultures of other peoples. Not long ago, I attended a conference where an African American speaker, Ashley Bryant, advised, first, be rooted in your own culture. Then add the cultures of others so that you don't become top-heavy and fall over, rootless. One way to add the culture of others is through books. There are many quality books available today that can help children learn about the diversity of people and grow in awareness and understanding. I'd like to focus on some general themes and talk a little about several books appropriate for those themes. Books for Children Preschool through grade two. Let's begin with the cultures themselves. Very Last First Time by Jan Andrews. A young Inuit girl enters the eerie world that lies beneath the ice of a northern sea, alone for the very first time, the very last first time. Routinely, Eva and her mother, when the tide was out, would lower themselves down through the thick winter ice to walk on the ocean floor in search of mussels for food. This time, Eva's solitary experience in the breathtaking underworld draws her further afield. Suspense mounts as, with the tide coming in, she drops the candle, lighting her way to the exit. An imaginative experience and an insight into Inuit culture for five to eight-year-olds. Black is Brown is Tan by Arnold Adolph is a book that's been around for a number of years, but I recommend it because it's a wonderfully warm story of a biracial family. The Goat in the Rug, as told to Charles Blood and Martin Link by Geraldine. Geraldine the Goat tells the true story of how her Glen May the Weaver makes her wool into a Navajo rug. The listener learns with Geraldine not only about the care that goes into making the rug, but also about friendship. African-American illustrator Tom Feelings won a Caldecott honor for the black and white art in Moja Means One, written by his wife Muriel. It acquaints the reader with East African life while the text teaches counting from 1 to 10 in Swahili. They've also done an alphabet book, Jambo Means Hello. How My Parents Learned to Eat by Ina Freeman. Everyone knows how to eat, right? You just pick up a fork, but what if everyone else is using chopsticks? A young girl is telling of the courtship of her parents a Japanese schoolgirl and an American sailor, becomes a thought-provoking, funny, and original portrayal of the similarities and differences between cultures. Names are important because they belong to us. In other cultures, they may be even more meaningful. There's the well-known Chinese folk tale, Tiki Tiki Tembo. There's a new book by Gelman, Justin's Hebrew Name. And there's 
Upsilimana Tumpalarado in Turtle Knows Your Name. Here, in Who Paddled Backward with Trout by Howard Norman, a young Cree boy unhappy with his name. Well, would you like to be known as Trout with Flattened Nose? Sets out to earn a new one, one he can be proud of. The Silver Whistle by Ann Tompert. Miguel used the money he'd saved to buy a silver whistle to help the needy he met on his way to the Christmas celebration at the cathedral. But his gift of a homemade clay whistle brings a smile to the Christ child's face. A Mexican version of the Clown of God for ages five through eight. We can become more sensitive toward those who have had to leave their homeland behind and all that was familiar to them with some of these books. Our newest book on interracial adoption through moon and stars and night skies is the reminiscence of a young Southeast Asian boy about the flight to his new home and parents in America. An earlier book, Katie Bow, has an older American brother describing the adoption of his Korean-born baby sister for ages three or four through nine. I, Young, Ai Kyung's Dream. A Korean child, unhappy in her new American surroundings, is inspired to learn both to adjust to the new and to be true to herself. The story speaks to the heart of all immigrants, helping them to adjust and sensitizing American children to their problems. A bonus are the gorgeous illustrations, vivid, and the bilingual text. I Speak English for My Mom by Muriel Stanek. A young Mexican-American girl in Chicago translates for her mother, who speaks only Spanish, until Mrs. Gomez decides to learn English in order to get a better job. While the treatment is mundane, it does deal with a problem important with today's immigrants. I Hate English by Ellen Levine. May May was smart in Hong Kong but she feels dumb in New York because she doesn't know or want to learn the language. She may help American children understand the frustrations of the new immigrant. It's a patient teacher who brings her around. Another type of multicultural book is one set in another country, showing what life is like there. Tuan, the young Vietnamese boy in this book by Eva Olson, is visiting his grandmother when a strange dog bites him. Serum is scarce, but the doctor is able to obtain some, and Tuan recovers in time to enjoy the children's festival. Everyday life in Vietnam is portrayed through luminous silk paintings. The Day of Ahmed's Secret by Florence Heidi. Egypt is geographically part of Africa, and Ahmed's world is the city of Cairo. All day long, as he works delivering bottles of water with his donkey cart, Ahmed hugs his secret to himself, rejoicing until evening when he can share it with his family. His secret? This boy who works all day long on the streets has finally learned to write his name. Our Home is the Sea by Ricky Levinson. Minnesota children accustomed to our winters, may wonder at the story of a Chinese boy who lives on a sampan in the Hong Kong harbor, a boy who wants to be a fisherman like his father. South African-based Natombi Song by Jenny Seed. Six-year-old Natombi, thrilled when her mother sends her on an errand to the store, is dismayed when her purchase is accidentally ruined. After all, spilled sugar is spilled sugar, and she has no money to replace it. But when she sings and dances her sorrow in the marketplace, a watching black tourist couple leave her a coin. All is well. Carefully rendered, colorful rural scenes accompany this longer picture book story for children ages five through nine.
Another way to understand people is through biographies, the lives of heroes and others who grew up within the culture. Ragtime Tumpy by Alan Schroeder is the fictionalized account of the childhood of the legendary entertainer Josephine Baker. Even then, she loved to dance. The luminous paintings shine with her exuberant spirit. picture book of Martin Luther King Jr. Each year seems to bring at least one new King biography. This one by David Adler is particularly welcome because, with its brief, easy-to-read text and colored illustrations, it can be used with younger children, ages four through eight. We often try to understand another culture through its folk tales. The village of round and square houses. Tos is like no other village in the world. Grandma Tika explains why the men live in square houses and the women in round ones. Anne Griffelconi, who received a Caldecott honor for her illustrations in this, has recently published Osa's Pride. Years ago, we had the five Chinese brothers. In the new Seven Chinese Brothers by Margaret Mahi, the brothers still look alike, but they're real people, not yellow stereotypes. Ictomi in the Boulder. Author illustrator Paul Goebel, the most well known writer of American uh, Indian stories working today, was born in England but he's an adopted member of the Yakima and Oglala Sioux tribes and lives in the Black Hills of South Dakota. In this book, funny asides by both the storyteller and the Sioux trickster, Tommy, help explain why bats have flat faces and why the Great Plains are covered with small rocks. Funny. Te Ata the author of Baby Rattlesnake is a 92-year-old Native American storyteller who was designated Oklahoma's first state treasure. In this traditional Chickasaw teaching tale, an unruly youngster learns what happens when you get something before you're ready for it. The sophisticated cartoon illustrations are occasionally jarring. I had little trouble coping with the snake wearing lipstick for ages four through eight. Rainbow Crow by Nancy Van Laan. The author has written down an old Lenape tale about the gift of fire. It should be an excellent read aloud for all ages. And the illustrations are lovely. The Empty Pot by Demi. The Chinese emperor decrees that his successor will be the child who grows the most beautiful flower from the seeds he distributes. Young gardener Ping's joy turns to sorrow when he alone returns to the emperor with an empty pot. His seed did not grow. Then the emperor reveals that he had handed out cooked seeds. None of them could grow. The other gardeners have proved themselves dishonest and Ping's virtue is rewarded. Lovely story. Demi has also written The Magic Boat. Two-time Newbery Award winner Catherine Patterson's spare prose in The Tale of the Mandarin Ducks captures the spirit about two ducks who, separated by a cruel lord who wishes to possess the drake for his colorful plumage, reward a compassionate couple who risk their lives to reunite the ducks. The luminous watercolor and pastel paintings look like woodcuts. And they're a perfect accompaniment to this tale of kindness rewarded for first grade and up. 
The engaging Hmong Porkwa tale, Nine in One, Gur Gur, by refugee Blia Ziong, explains why there are so few tigers on earth today. Its characters are portrayed with sympathy and wit, and the whole is distinctively illustrated in the style of appliqued story cloths. How the guinea fowl got her spots. The Neapolitan Barbara Knutson spent time in Africa both as a missionary child and as a Peace Corps worker. This Swahili tale of friendship should be an excellent read aloud. She has made wonderful use of white spaces and the illustrations include many traditional African designs. The scratch board illustrations, ages four through eight. A Journey to Paradise. The East Indian version of the folk tale that tells us that no matter how far we seek, whether it be treasure or paradise, it may be in our own backyards. Crisp collages evoke the Eastern setting for ages four through eight. Poetry can be another source of, for developing an appreciation of another culture. And language, too, can sensitize and teach about other peoples. I never realized what it was like to be illiterate until I found myself in a Japanese mountain village faced with a completely unrecognizable alphabet. When people came in and asked for books about with a text containing a few words of Spanish which could be understood within the context of the writing, this the Tamarindo Puppy and Other Poems was the first to come to mind. For example, the Tamarindo Puppy is a very nice puppy, is a muy lindo puppy whom we visit every day. Another one, tortillas, tortillitas, pardon me, para mamá, and other nursery rhymes in Spanish and English with charming folk-like illustrations. Arroz con leche, popular songs and rhymes from Latin America, selected and illustrated by Lulu de Lacre. The bilingual text suggests appropriate finger plays or dance movements for several of the dozen folk songs from Argentina, Mexico, and Puerto Rico. Appended are melodies for nine of the songs and an appropriate but difficult to read recipe for arroz con leche, milk, rice with milk. If I had a paca, by Charlotte Pomerantz, illustrated by Nancy Tafuri, is subtitled Poems in Eleven Languages. The dozen poems either contain individual words in a language, such as Samoan or Japanese, or are complete poems in another language paired with their English translations. As you may have guessed, paka means cat in Swahili. Holidays and celebrations provide excellent opportunities to learn about other cultures. In Hello Amigos by Tricia Brown, we spend a day with Frankie Valdez, a seven-year-old Mexican-American boy living in San Francisco's Mission District. He's celebrating his birthday. The brief text has Spanish words interspersed unobtrusively. A glossary at the end gives both definitions and phonetic pronunciations. A recurrent theme in children's books, especially in the Asian, Asian cultures, deals with the ability to perform, to live up to expectations. In Ayu and the Perfect Moon, magnificently dressed young Ayu debuts on the night of a full moon as a performer in the traditional Balinese Legong dance. Cheetah's Christmas Tree. Author Elizabeth Howard's cousin, Cheetah McCard, was born in Baltimore in 1908, the only child of one of the city's first black doctors. Howard celebrates the joys of Christmas as Cheetah might have experienced them in an upper middle class home in Old Baltimore. Illustrations by Floyd Cooper reflect the warmth of both father daughter and extended family relationships. For five to eight year olds. Banam by Jean Lee. Nan is finally old enough to go with her family to celebrate Van Min 
the day reserved in Vietnam for honoring one's ancestors. There she meets Banam, and through the old woman learns that despite her frightening appearance, inside the gravekeeper is a kind, beautiful person. The talented author of Flossie and the Fox, Patricia McKissick, has produced other delightful heroines. The captivating Mirandi in Mirandi and Brother Wind, determined to win her town's cakewalk contest, inspired illustrator Jerry Pinckney to produce the luxuriously realistic watercolors that earned him a 1989 Caldecott Honor Award. Colorful photographs document the day as Ernie and his family in Lion Dancer celebrate the New Year in New York City's Chinatown. The six-year-old is participating in his first lion dance. Incidentally, some of the kids were delighted to discover that Ernie's been studying Kung Fu since age three. For six to nine-year-olds. We've talked about how to learn to appreciate differences through books. There's another side to that coin, realizing the similarity, the universality of people's lives. Amoko and Efwa Bear by Sonia Apia is set in Ghana. Amoko's excitement about the new drum her aunt brought her caused her to forget and then mislay her beloved teddy bear. Mother and father must come to the rescue. Striking primitive illustrations provide both authentic details of daily life. Author and illustrator are English-born, married to Ghanaians. First-time author Joyce Barrett has the support of Coretta Scott King award-winning illustrator Pat Cummings in Willie's Not the Hugging Kind. Willie's best friend Joe thinks hugging is silly. So Willie shrugs off his family's hugs. When they stop hugging him, Willie discovers he misses hugs. He tries hugging things, a tree, a towel, his bike, but it's people he needs, people who hug back. A loving story reminding us that we're all the hugging kind for five to eight year olds. In not so fast, Songlolo, by Nick, Nikki Daly. Granny Gogo delights her young shopping helper grandson by buying him new bright red sneakers. The pleasure of new shoes is universal. The idea that in another country tennis shoes are called tackies will surprise the children here. Jamaica's find. When Jamaica returned the toy dog she brought home from the park she found something even more valuable, a friend. The author, Juanita Havel, lives in Minneapolis and has written several other books, including a sequel, Jamaica Tagalong. Sarah Hayes, Eat Up Gemma. Bright, clear paintings spotlight both the problem and big Big Brother's inspired solution to getting baby Gemma to eat. Hayes has also done Happy Christmas, Gemma. Tucking Mommy In. Perhaps inspired by the author's own multiracial family. Australian sisters Sue and Jenny, in an affectionately funny role reversal, put a weary mommy to bed. On Mother's Lap by Ann Herbert Scott. In a gentle, gentle inlet tale of sibling rivalry, Mother learns there's always room. I mean, part, Michael learns there's always room on Mother's Lap a universal childhood experience for anyone who has a sibling. Baby Says by John Steptoe. Noted black illustrator Steptoe's softly colored drawings 
detail of a common sibling conflict. Heartwarmingly settled. This was Steptoe's last book. His death at age 39 was a great loss to the children's book world for ages two through five. An intergenerational focus helps in understanding one's own heritage. Tell Me a Story, Mama is the witty, warm, collaborative effort of first-time author Angela Johnson and first-time illustrator David Soman. In a bedtime dialogue, a young girl and her mother remember together favorite stories of Mama's childhood. The strength demonstrated by the continuity of generations make this a wonderful story for sharing. Soman is especially gifted in portraying feelings through the expressions and postures of both people and animals. I'd hate to meet that dog. Author and illustrator have combined more recently on a book called When I Am Old With You, where a young black girl is talking with her grandfather about what they'll do together when she gets to be as old as he is. Sachiko means happiness by Kimiko Sakai. Sachiko, whose name means happiness in Japanese, shares that name with her beloved grandmother. They enjoy doing things together. Then, grandmother changed, and young Sachiko must learn to cope with her grandmother's Alzheimer's disease for ages five through eight. The Patchwork Quilt by Valerie Flournoy. Young Tanya loved listening to her grandmother as they worked together on the patchwork quilt where she's stitching together pieces of cloth from clothing that belonged to different members of the family. Grandmother falls ill Tanya can't do it by herself, and so she calls in the rest of the family, making it a family project that draws them all together. If you'd like to find additional titles, you can pick up this book list, The Rainbow Collection for Younger Readers, at the Minneapolis Public Library, or ask your favorite children's librarian at your local library for suggestions. Thank you, Lois Rehnquist, for being our guest on All About Kids. And thank you for joining us. Please tune in again. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency. We thank you for watching and we hope you visit your public library often.